everybody to another edition of the Design Thinking Content Series. So today um, we'll be talking about we'll be talking about innovation and social change and how what what link does it have? So you have social change, you have innovation. What are the links in between? So we have Derek here, who is a sophomore and um, has come up with a lot of innovations of his own to me. So he'll share some of them. And he's going to lead the discussion. So we are going to do it together. And Derry also you know, has written a paper on innovation, some innovation stuff too. So I think he's the right person for this, this discussion. So um, let's welcome Derry as he takes us through this session. My, my name, as you can see, is Emmanuel Derry Wanye. And then today we are going to discuss a very broad um, topic, innovation for social change. So this, these two, innovation and then social change, if you take them independently, both of them are quite broad. So I would like us to play with words and try and understand the two of them. So what is innovation, marker? Um, Innovation, can you see from here? Yeah. Yeah. So let's split this into two. So you have in and then end, and then you have over, and then you have action. We are playing with words just to understand what innovation means. So in here for this, and here for end. Of the O V for over, and then here we introduce C to get our action. And then what I'm trying to say is that we've heard a lot about innovation. That's trying to create new ways of doing the same thing that we were doing before, improving on what was existing before. But what this one is saying to that sense is that now everyone who is an innovator is always involved is always involved in that particular thing he or she is going to improve and then what that person does is goes over the limits breaks the status quo and then it's just all about every day's action every day's action Every day. So, innovation here is you being involved in every day's action, trying to think a little bit over the bar, the limits that people think about those everyday action, and then you improving upon that everyday action. So, we we'll look at a couple of examples, and then we we'll try and then understand this further. So. The change aspect is that we have a society and the whole world on its own is called the global village. And there's a lot of cry for change and change and change. But change means that we have to do things differently and that's when innovation comes in. And so we say it is time for change, but what kind of change are we expecting? The change that we are expecting is not going to come from anywhere but all around us. It means that the things that we have been doing, we have to do them differently. And then this video is going to show you what I'm talking about. So before I start this video, this video is, is talking about um, how people want to solve um, creating space or building in general. So now population is increasing. People don't have homes to sleep. We have a lot of plastic waste around us. How do we innovatively use plastic waste to create shelter for people, or even room for anything at all? So, um, wait. Sound?
So let us forget about the, the people involved in this video and come to Ghana. Ghana is crying, always crying about schools under trees and other things. That's actually a real problem. And then what we are looking at is space, room for education. So we are looking forward to changing the way education or we deliver um, teaching in Ghana. And then what we actually need is more resources to build rooms or lecture halls or classroom blocks for people to study. That's the change we are looking for. But you see how people have innovatively created space for themselves in order to enhance education. So that's what I'm trying to say here. That change will only come if you are being innovative. There's one word I want us to look at in innovation. I mentioned over, like you thinking above what everyone else is thinking. And I'd like us to um, split this one too. So all for those who are open-minded, V for those who are very vulnerable, E for those who empathize, and then R for those who reiterate and then are ready to fail. So, innovators are those who are open-minded. And I'm sure in your FDE or those who haven't done FDE before, there's something called how might we and then what if questions. That's what you, the question that you use to form your research questions. And then the essence of those questions is to give you an open mind when you go for your research. So you don't go with an already formed or pre-assumed conclusions. Um, you don't go with pre-assumed conclusions into your research. But you go with a very open mind. You want to actually grasp something new. You're not looking forward to hearing what you used to know. But you want to get the ones that um, in statistics we call outliers, they are not so much in line with the status quo. So you go there with open mind, and innovators are those who are really, really open minded. Vulnerable here is you are actually so much, you are, you are so much adaptive, you are not so straight, you are not looking forward to going just one way, but you are vulnerable, you are very much um, open to anything that comes your way. You are, you are willing to accept things that come away. You don't actually push them away. You are very vulnerable or prone to any change. Then empathize is, if you watch this video, you may as well see, let's say maybe assuming this guy is a designer, this guy will, would, have, would have been someone who had gone to see how people struggle in finding places to learn. And then realize that maybe um, this place is such a, is such a, a hot, a hot area, a hot, uh, the temperature over here is hot. So as they were building, they provided um, ventilation and other things just to make sure that learning is comfortable. They provided um, towels for the floor and everything. Innovators are those who really empathize. They try to step in the shoes of those who use their, their products or those who actually benefit from the change they are bringing. And then R for those who are willing to be I treat. So, Innovation or change doesn't happen all of a sudden. It is gradual. You start from somewhere, you fail, and then you go back to the drawing board, try and get things right the next time. So it's like a repeated process. So let's bring the conversation home. This is another thing that we did here in Ashesi, on the, the Ashesi farm. It was rainy season, and then when the rain falls, we have a farm. We need to always irrigate. But when the rain falls, it looks as if excess of it goes waste. And just a small portion of the rainwater actually irrigates the field. So how do we harvest the excess and then keep it? Then being very innovative, if I should say, regarding plastic waste as a means of controlling or managing the waste that we produce here on campus. We gather plastic waste, then we use it to create a plastic roof instead of going to buy aluminum roof. So that's what innovation for social change is all about. You try and then solve a problem innovatively. Do you get it? So this one too is called the Wello water tank. 
and it's something that um, was created in rural India. So women used to spend several, like almost 25% of their time, every day time, just in search of water. And when they finally found the water, they had only small containers to carry just small um, quantities of water back home. And that was like a waste of their time. So someone innovatively created this, a barrel that can, that can hold like four times the quantities that they were usually carrying back home. And so with this one, you just fill it and you roll it on the ground. That is what innovation for social change is about. You actually involve, so the person who did this might have maybe visited India before, noticed the kind of problem that they were going through, had his or her own personal feel of it. Then later on, they come up with the change to improve the lives of people. This one here is amazing. The Echo Dawati Desk. So it's something that Kenyans have started working on. So you know, in education, people are giving birth. Um, school enrollment is increasing. So it means you are going to build new schools and you are going to have, we would have to fill the place with furniture. What they are doing is, instead of going to um, cut down timber and other, other things just to create the furniture, these ones are made out of plastics. So the plastic waste that we have around, they gather them and they use them to make furniture for the children to study. So managing waste at the same time enhancing education, that is innovation for social change. I hope you understand. And then, this is time for brainstorming. So now that we understand social change, that was why I divided the, the, the audience into two, agriculture education. So just look through agriculture, and now that you understand social change, try and then brainstorm and come up with anything at all that you think will suit an innovation for social change. We start from <laughs> so in comes first agriculture. My dictionary, he comes first. Yeah. So what what what's the agriculture do for us? Yeah. Just very short, like twenty-five seconds. Okay. So. The problem we are tackling in the space of agriculture is the problem of processing agriculture waste. Mm -hmm. So we identify some perishable food like cashew, tomato, banana, and this product after it's go ripe, it's usually just got to away. So our solution, our innovation is we can make use out of this waste. For example, for cashew, um, from his research, we can make jam with the cashew fruit. Mm -hmm. From tomato, we can make tomato juice or tomato paste with that. Okay. So, I'll come back to you. Then the next, the next group was um, education. So what? So our problem was our uh, area was education. Mm -hmm. and we came up with four. Mm -hmm. uh, Just choose one. Choose one. Mm -hmm. So the. We use charcoal instead of lead for pencil. Mm -hmm. You know, as people are learning in schools, so much pressure builds up that mm -hmm. they start chewing. Yes. So instead of using the lead, because lead is really harmful to human beings, mm -hmm. so then we, we decide to use charcoal instead so that they won't get sick and go to the hospital. And also, nowadays people use gas stoves and all those things, but with charcoal, the things go faster and money is made by the people who sell charcoal. Okay, so um, I have two questions. 
the first one is agriculture. How, or even for the two of you, how did you struggle? Like, was it really a struggle for you to identify a problem and then even brainstorm to come up with some kind of innovative solution? Was it a struggle or it wasn't? It was. Was it? So you see, a bit. Yeah, a bit. Why, why, why was it a bit? Have you had any prior experience with what you propose? Yes. Yes. That's what I was driving towards. That you see, for you to be innovative, or for you to be an innovative, um, an innovator, you have to have direct engagement with what you want to innovate around. If you are not having any form of direct engagement with that thing, it should be very difficult for you to actually come up with innovation. And in the end, I will tell you why something should be described as very innovative for it to be an innovation. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So this activity that you just did, I made it so vague so that you will kind of struggle and then that will prove the point that for you to become an innovator, you have to have direct engagement with what you want to innovate around. Then let's move on to, he said something concerning charcoal. So charcoal, what are you going to make your charcoal out of? Wood. <laughs> Wood. So it means that every time you produce, let's say, 10 pencils or 10 what, writing tools, how many trees will you fall? It's, it's not even one. Uh -huh. Not even so one. Yeah, one tree can produce more than 100 pencils. Good. But the 100 pencils will just get up for how many, how many days and how many people? So you see, that also talks about the fact that an innovator, you have to be like open-minded, you get it? Yeah. And you have to think about the thing, like you have to go over the usual, the usual thing. So you, right here, you are, you are trying to come up with like charcoal to replace in the, the writing tools that we have. But that one is going to create another problem. So the social change that you are looking for to effect is actually not going to happen. So that one draws limitation on your innovation. So you are creating some sort of solution, and that solution is coming to create a problem. So it is not actually something that you can call an innovation. Do you get it? So let's draw the distinction between innovation and invention. Can anyone help? So what she's saying is that actually the basis of this the basis of this is that so you have to invent everything that you are going to improve upon has been created before. Do you get it? So this is invention. You create something. We all know that before we can build, we have to use building blocks, sand, other things. That is the, the usual thing, the routine. But now we are changing, we are improving upon it. We are going to use plastic bottles to make rooms for us to use for education. So the invention, the thing is actually in existence, but now we have improved upon it. But you see, the key thing about this is that it has to solve a problem. That is when you can actually take and say, this one has become an innovative thing. So the building that they built came to solve a problem without creating, necessarily creating another problem. Mm -hmm then you can actually say that this thing is an innovation and it is towards what social change because it is going to affect a change. So that is all that we have for content series today.